What's up guys, thanks for tuning in to another YouTube video. Um, I know I've been out for a little while, I was sick for about like a week and a half, also did film some, but didn't end up getting like the content and stuff like that that I wanted, the quality was kind of low and I'm not about like putting out, putting out weak quality to you guys, I wanna make sure that I get the best stuff that I can get out there. Also, as you can see, I am a, in a new setup, I'm in my same apartment, but decided to switch the setup on you, give you a little bit more of a, a bigger idea of my collection and stuff like that. I will eventually do a collection video. Um, just want to get a few more things and stuff like that. I want to stock up on some other stuff that I feel like I do need. Now, today's video is very, very cool. I'm going to be showing you the future of Adidas. Now, as most of the world knows already, Adidas has been running with their boost for a very long time now with the Ultra Boost, um, the NMD, the Human Racer, the EQTs, on and on and on. Everybody when Boost first came out was craving Boost. Everybody wanted Boost, people still want it. Um, Yeezys and stuff like that do have Boost in them as well, most of them do. Um, but Adidas is pushing in a different direction now. Still trying, to, still trying to incorporate Boost, but I believe that the contract with Adidas is ending soon or Boost actually doesn't have a contract with Adidas because Adidas did not invent Boost and Boost, uh, Boost is actually invented by another company and they're allowed to, you know, use their use their products however they want to use their product. I'm pretty sure that Puma also has Boost in their shoes now and their performance shoes. So, but they call it something like um, Ignite because I believe it's infused with another technology that Puma does have. So I think Adidas is kind of, you know, done Boost. They've really done it to death. They started to like retro old Ultra Boost that everybody wanted, like the OGs, like the Cream 1.0 or yeah, OG 1.0. Um, the cream, the um, silver medal pack, the gold medal, everything like that. I believe that they're trying to go in a different direction and show everybody something new, and that is the Futurecraft 4D. So this model that I did pick up is a ZX4000 4D. Um, I was really waiting for this shoe for a very long time. I know other 4D shoes have came out. This is not the first one to release. Um, this is one of the less limited ones, I guess you could say. I, it was pretty easy for me to get my hands on a pair uh, down at Nice Kicks in Austin. Um, but this one was definitely one of my favorites. I believe the first person I saw to have these was um, 2J's Kicks, the owner of um, Urban Necessities. He had this one as long and also the black pair that's going to drop in a couple weeks as well. This one dropped, I believe, February the 2nd or 3rd. I believe it was, it was the weekend before um, All-Star Weekend. There was, it wasn't too, too hard to get them. Uh, walked in, grabbed my pair, saw them kind of sitting and stuff like that. And I believe the reason why 4Ds do sit if they aren't very limited is because of the price point. Now, the price point on these was 350 The price point on most 4Ds is about that uh, range. I don't believe what the first ones are going for. I'm pretty sure it was like 400 The cheapest one, I believe, is the um, the Alpha Edge. And that one is 300 so it's not that like big of a difference. You're still paying a lot. And that's why there's not really a resale on the ones that aren't that limited. Of course, the ones that are limited, like the Kith um, and the, uh, the original drops and stuff like that are very limited. So those are going to have like a very, very steep um, resale value. But um, the reason why the GR ones don't have that big of a resale value or any shoe for that matter, if the retail is very high, the chance of the resale being very high also is very low because um, paying $300 for a shoe is already like a pretty steep price for a shoe. When Jordan runs retail for 160 and you know, even the more limited pairs don't go for like $300, you can get your hands on like most of the pairs for around that price range. What I would like to see Adidas do next with this is uh, definitely bring the price down, try to make more, um, more of the GR pairs just to kind of like you know, really push their push their campaign on the 4Ds because I do believe that they're gonna try to cancel out or not cancel out, but try and replace Boost with 4Ds eventually. The performance aspect, this one is not a performance shoe. It's a lifestyle shoe, obviously. It's a little bit more bulky. The top uh, isn't exactly like something that I would run in or work out in or anything like that. 
and based on the colorway and just the overall look of the shoe, you can tell that it's not a performance shoe. It's mostly made for lifestyle. Now, I do have plenty of boost shoes. I have Ultra Boost, EQTs, um, Human Racers, Yeezys that have boost in them, everything like that. And I love boost. I think boost is a great, great technology. And I think that Adidas putting out boost and doing boost made, made Nike really step up their game and uh, respect Adidas on another level because they were really owning the game for a very long time. The only negative thing that I do have to say about Boost is that Boost does not have a bounce back effect that the um, the Nike React does or the, uh, the Pegasus does. And by bounce back, I mean that um, after a few wears, the shoe is gonna stay in the mold that it's in with and not give you a a pushback on your foot if you were to run in it or if you were to perform on it. Now the Futurecraft 4D, if you love Boost, you love how soft Boost is and, and uh, everything like that, all the great things about Boost, you probably wouldn't like the fit of the 4D. The 4D is a very sturdy, very, um, very uh, bounce kind of feeling. When you step into it, it is not the same softness as a Boost shoe you're gonna get a little bit more of a uh, stable stable step, but when you come off of that step, you're gonna get that bounce back effect that they wanted with the 4D. Now, Adidas, I believe, has said that they've used over 17 years of technology of study going into the 4D, which is absolutely great, and I believe that they do hit the head on the nail, or hit the nail on the head with the places that they did decide to put um, the pressure on in the 4D shoe. Whenever you step, there's certain pressure points in your foot that carry more weight than others. And I believe that with boost, that's not, the bounce back effect isn't obtainable with that type of technology, but with the 4D, it definitely is. And they definitely got it perfect with that step. Overall, the ZX4000 4D is definitely one of my favorite 4D shoes to release. Um, the colorway to me is really dope. There is another one dropping on March 8th or March 9th. The second weekend of March, there will be another colorway dropping of this shoe in a darker upper. Um, same like kind of color blocking and stuff like that. I believe that they just made the whole top upper, uh, the upper a lot darker than this one. Um, I'll definitely be going after that one. But overall, guys, I think the 4D is a great, great shoe. The technology is definitely, in my opinion, very, very... Um, innovative and it's super different. I do love the feeling of 4D more than I do love the feeling of Boost. I'm just gonna say that right now. Whenever I wear Boost, I tend not to wear it till it's dead. Um, what I mean by that is like, if you go to just about like any college campus, you're gonna see like kids that have a pair of white Ultra Boosts on their feet and they are absolutely beat. Like they're basically like a vanilla brown and I know that that shoe is not still comfortable because Boost, after about a few wears, does not bounce back the way that the 4Ds will, the way that uh, like the React from Nike will or the Pegasus. So if I were to pick Boost or 4D, I'm definitely going with the 4D route. Also, Boost on sneakers is kind of just played out. Like they've done it so many times. They're still trying to do it. They're still trying to put on new models and stuff like that. Um, I think it's definitely a good idea for Adidas to go into a different direction. Like I said, I would like to see the price point come down, even to come down to like a $200 range, which is still pretty steep for a sneaker. Um, that's usually what we're paying for like the Yeezys and uh, you know retro Jordans, like the sixes or the fours or stuff like that. That's like the kind of the cap of where people wanna go. The 350 range is a little too high. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will have another video uploaded in about a week from now uh, on a Jordan that I am very, very happy about picking up. Uh, definitely the most slept on shoe of the year, in my opinion, so far. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment on this video. Let me know if you have a pair of 40s or if you don't, what pair are you looking to pick up if you are looking to pick up a pair. If you do, um, do you prefer, prefer Boost over 40 or 40 over Boost?
Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you on the next, which is absolutely great. And I believe that they do hit the head on the nail or hit the nail on the head with the places that they did decide to put um, the pressure on in the 4D shoe. So whenever you step, there's certain pressure points in your foot that carry more weight than others. And I believe that with boost, that's not the bounce back effect isn't obtainable with that type of technology, but with the 4D, it definitely is. And they definitely got it. <coughs> <coughs> Fucking allergies. And they definitely got it perfect with that step. Overall, the ZX 4000 4D is definitely one of my favorite 4D shoes to release. Um, the colorway to me is really dope. There is another one dropping on March 8th or March 9th. The second weekend of March, there will be another colorway dropping of this shoe in a darker upper. Um, same like kind of color blocking and stuff like that. I believe that they just made the whole top upper, uh, the upper a lot darker than this one. Um, I'll definitely be going after that one. But overall, guys, I think the 4D is a great, great shoe. The technology is definitely, in my opinion, very, very um, innovative, and it's super different. I do love the feeling of 4D more than I do love the feeling of Boost. I'm just going to say that right now, that the whenever I wear Boost, I tend not to wear it till it's dead. Um, what I mean by that is like if you go to just about like any college campus, you're gonna see like kids that have a pair of white ultra boots on their feet and they are absolutely beat. Like they're basically like a vanilla brown. And I know that that shoe is not still comfortable because boost after about a few wears does not bounce back the way that the 4Ds will, the way that uh, like the React from Nike will or the Pegasus. So if I were to pick boost or 4D, I'm definitely going with the 4D route. Also, Boost on sneakers is kind of just played out. Like, they've done it so many times. They're still trying to do it. They're still trying to put on new models and stuff like that. Um, I think it's definitely a good idea for Adidas to go into a different direction. Like I said, I would like to see the price point come down, even to come down to like a $200 range, which is still pretty steep for a sneaker. Um, that's usually what we're paying for like the Yeezys and, uh, you know, retro Jordans, like the sixes or the fours or stuff like that. That's like, the kind of the cap of where people want to go the 350 range is a little too high thank you guys for tuning in i will have another video uploaded in about a week from now uh on a jordan that i am very very happy about picking up uh, definitely the most slept on shoe of the year, in my opinion, so far. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment on this video. Let me know if you have a pair of 4Ds or if you don't, what pair are you looking to pick up if you are looking to pick up a pair? If you do, um, do you prefer, prefer Boost over 4D or 4D over Boost? Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you on the next one.